we knew everything about David Pino and Tolkien. And so when I met him, I said to him everything about his life, things that he didn't remember David Byrne. And he said to me, okay, now stop to be a fan and start to be a normal person. We, we speak <laughs> each other. <laughs> I really don't remember how the idea came up on my mind. I, I thought it was, a, I don't know, I, th I thought it was a poetical uh, idea, an idea that put together the solitude of this man, the, the nostalgia for uh, his uh, uh, work. I loved the idea that he was able to direct everything, everybody, also the animals. It was my dream to work with him. He's a kind of a gentleman that I love to, to, to see, to see in the movies and to see in life. And it was great because we, we shared the same passions for the football and restaurants. So we were completely agree about everything. Yeah. <laughs> For me, Talking Heads, when I found out when I was 18 that my brother um, teached me about them because he was a huge fan of them. For me, it was everything. I, uh, from Talking Heads uh, was in my mind, it was an obsession in my mind when I was young. No, but also now. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, mostly when I was young, I did the crazy things in order to go to the concert of David Byrne around uh, Italy. I had a friend, a very good friend, that we knew everything about David Byrne and Tolkien. And so when I met him, I said to him everything about his life, things that he didn't remember David Byrne. And he said to me, okay, now stop to be a fan and start to be a normal person. We, we speak <laughs> each other. <laughs> yeah, because I was... Uh, my behavior was uh, like a fun. I said, you in the 1979 went to <laughs> Baltimore to do this, to do that. <laughs> yeah. I knew everything. It's a scene that came up in my mind uh, step after step. Because, of course, I was a huge fan of uh, Stop Making Sense, the concert, the film concert of Jonathan Demme. And I was thinking how to do something uh, like uh, that with the same, um, yes, the same irony that uh, Tolkien Heads and Jonathan Demme had when, I don't know if you remember that movie, the, that movie starts with David Byrne that um, sing a song without the background. And the background, uh, song after song, uh, starts to be com composed, and it, that's a great idea. And I don't remember, I had that idea, it was very complicated to do. Uh, suddenly I had the idea to, to raise up, to raise the, the platform, and, uh, and it was very complicated because the woman that uh, is uh, on the armchair is a stunt. Uh, everything must be um, attached to the... It was not easy, but it was a big... Uh, a big challenge to do that because at the same time um, all that stuff that move produce noise and it was a problem because uh, I, I had the intention to, to record the song live so there was a problem with the noise so and I, I told to David uh, Byrne uh, when he arrived uh, uh, in order to shoot the scene so he found out there the idea I was the, I was scared that it was it's a bullshit. <laughs> Instead, he said, "Oh no, it's a it's a great idea that I have to to lean." Yeah, he was very excited about that. And we spent one day in order to do one uh, one shot. Yeah, we did several takes, but it was one, only one shot. Yeah. That scene, I no, I I shot the. Um, Pretty at the beginning of the shooting, not not the beginning, beginning, but uh, very early because it was maybe 
first days of September. I started in August. Yeah, no, no, very, very early. It was very exciting. It was three nights on the terrace of uh, a company. It was very complicated because um, we brought, uh, I don't know, more than uh, 300, 300 uh, people. And there was just one lift to go out. So we started uh, to bring the people up uh, around uh, 3, uh, 3 p.m. My assistants did a great job to figure out uh, how much time we needed to bring all the people up. So, and we went, we, 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 we shoot from the 9 p.m. until uh, 6, 7 uh, a.m. in the morning. It was very exciting, yeah. <laughs> Succession of music, uh, I simply listened to uh, some famous uh, songs, uh, very popular, popular songs, uh, that the people loved to dance because there are many beautiful, beautiful and stupid songs at the same time in that area of the world of the music. But the, and it's not stupid, but just beautiful. The, the most important for me is uh, Raffaella Carra, the work that did Bob Sinclair and Raffaella Carra. That's an unbelievable song that. Uh, that I could dance, and I am not able to dance, but I could dance for, for three, four, five hours. So um, I think it was the right choice. It's very simple. It's the, the dynamic that belonged to my family, where everybody uh, made the fun of everybody else without a distinction. No, no, nothing is a serious, nobody is important. Everybody can be object of uh, a pr prank, uh, of a kidding. Of, um, so, um, so it's democratic. I can make fun of you, you can make fun of me, everything is allowed. It was something that belonged at, at the, the 80s. Everything was naive and um, genuine and um, also stupid because <laughs> They, uh, they were uh, able to, to laugh for everything, for everything that happened, yeah. No, I did not invent anything. It was, everything was true. My mom uh, loved to do that because she learned uh, at school in a play in theater that she did at school many many years before. No, also the the fool we had uh, the the wife of a guy that belonged to my family that uh, she had this fool and uh, every in every moment she put the fool she she dressed up with the fool because it's not like now that the fool and I agree. They are completely removed from the from the idea. But in the 80s, the fur was something uh, to, to, to show to everybody. It was a symbol of richness, a symbol of uh, elegance. Yeah. The idea of the scene came up in my mind uh, later, at, um, probably at the end of shooting. I asked to Judo to do another day of shooting uh, because I had that idea late. It was not at the beginning of the of the script. It, it's something that came up in my mind later after seeing Jude and how he walked, how he was used to walk, how he was proud and beautiful and uh, amazing and so on. We, 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 I decided to realize that. And I, I, I found the music during the editing. It was not easy to find the right music. We had at the beginning just Jude that walk on a green screen. And uh, during the editing uh, with my editor, uh, we had the idea of uh, the, the pictures uh, that uh, follows the history of the church. And uh, we found uh, the song uh, late. I don't remember, but for, for a long time, we had another song on that, uh, on that scene. <laughs> 